Good morning, friends. And I guess this is day two of Vlogtober. It is around 5.30. Typically, I would be rushing because back in the day, I used to leave for work around like 6, 6.15. But now, I don't even leave my house until 7.30. So, I have like two hours to just ease into my day. All my clothes are already pressed and ready. So, yeah, I have slow mornings every morning. Some days I choose to work out, but the fact is I sometimes go to a workout class after work. When I'm leaving so much earlier and have so much more time, I like to work out in the afternoon so that my mornings can just be so chill. Typically, I like read a little, drink some coffee, you know, live my life. I said that so casually, but that's true. I live a life. But deciding what I want to do with my coffee today, my go-to creamer right now is the Tachi Barista Pistachio Milk. I absolutely love it. Um, you can get it at a couple places. I've seen it at Target, and I've also picked it up at Whole Foods. So I've got it at both places. I highly recommend it. It's so good. So I'm going to make some coffee. Hopefully our coffee gets delivered today. And yeah, that's how we're going to start the day some coffee, some chilling, and then we might do some catching up today. Well, we are gonna catch up today. I did a Q&A not long ago, so I have a bunch of questions I wanna answer about this journey of the last six months. But yeah, we're gonna have a pretty relaxed day today. I got this mug when we were at the Amalfi Coast um, in August at a really beautiful pottery shop. It's like my favorite mug now. Something I've been loving is this Spice Walla Pumpkin Spice. Steven actually found it. He has an office in Asheville, which sadly has been hit really hard by the hurricane. Um, we've been doing a lot of donation drives here in the city to help and support. But um, when he was there a few weeks ago, he picked up this Spice Walla Pumpkin Spice and it is so good on top of your coffee. The devastation of Western North Carolina has been um, so heartbreaking to watch. I'm actually going to link down below some ways you can help if you would like to, but uh, we've been doing a ton of donation drives here in the city and a lot of um, little pop-ups to get things there. Asheville's about two hours west of us and we were hit and parts of the city were hit harder, but we experienced nothing like they did in Western North Carolina. So I know Steven's work is doing something, we're doing something at work, uh, but also so much around the city. So I'll link some ways if you wanna help. People have lost everything. So um, I think times like these, not only is it a call to action, but also like it puts so much in perspective of like the things that you may worry about or stress about. Um, someone else would like kill for that uh, because they're dealing with so much. But um, like I said, everything will be linked down below uh, with organizations that we've worked with as well as just other ways you can help. I've become really used to a slow morning, but it's now like my favorite time of my day. Actually, I have so many favorite times of day. Wow, how life can change. So it's a little after seven, it's like 7.05ish. Um, and I am just packing my lunch and taking my medicine for the day. I made these protein bites for work and I'm going to show you how I made them. So let's cut to that. What's awesome about this is once you learn the base, you can pretty much make them any variation that you like. So I'm starting with one and a half cups of quick oats. It does have to be quick oats. And then I'm going to do a cup of creamy natural peanut butter 
and then a half a cup of a crunchy organic peanut butter. Now I'm going to add a third of a cup of honey. I sprayed my measuring cup with a little cooking spray just to make that go much easier. I'm also going to add just a splash of vanilla. I made some with pumpkin puree the other week and they were delicious. I'll probably end up making those one day during Vlogtober. Now, I'm not gonna overdo it with this. I'm gonna add just a few mini chocolate chips. And then just for like some fun, festive color, I bought a bag of the mini M&Ms. I'm gonna sprinkle some of those in there. And now, I'm going to grab a spoon and mix this all together. And what's great is you can really eyeball this and start seeing if you need to sprinkle in a few more oats. You really just want to go until you get all the honey, all the peanut butter combined. They come together really quite quickly. You'll be able to fill them all come together. Eventually you want it to start clumping together like so. And I'm just going to do, I don't like mine super large. About that size. I'm going to just get these on the cookie sheet and let them chill for about 30 minutes before I put them in a sealable container. But these are just a really easy treat to grab with some extra protein. Nothing fancy. It's just something that I've gotten into the groove of doing since we moved is to have like these little snacks on hand that satisfy a sweet tooth. The other thing I've been making a lot more is my own granola. I'm sure we'll make some of that while we're doing Vlogtober. I'm hoping to, I've been cooking so much more, which I know some of you may be surprised because I cooked a lot in New York, but literally Stephen and I go out to eat once a week and that's for date night. And it's usually either Friday night or Saturday night. And then other than that, I have been cooking every single night. What's great about this recipe too is if you keep them pretty small like I do, you get so many out of it. Sometimes I'll throw like two in my lunchbox and with my afternoon coffee at work, I will have two of these to bite on and they just, I'll have two of these with my afternoon cup of coffee at work. And it really like satisfies this sweet tooth, but the oats and the peanut butter also are quite filling. So we'll let these chill for like 30 minutes. Like I said, what's so nice about this is that they come together so, so quickly. And this took all of mm, maybe seven minutes to put together. Oh wait, let, actually let me look at the camera. Less than 10 minutes. We're at eight minutes and 45 seconds currently. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 and a half, the little baby one. All right, these are just gonna go in the fridge for 30 minutes to chill. I'm gonna swing by and get some coffee. As long as I'm kind of like 
on my way to work by 7.15, um, I'm good to go. So, yeah. It's been like such a nice morning and yesterday was such a good Monday and I have a short week this week, so. <sighs> All right, friends, I'll see you in a little bit. Hello, friends. Um, it is 4.55 p.m. I am sweaty. I went from work straight to a Barry's um, boot camp. Well, it's not called Barry's boot camp anymore. They just changed it to Barry's now. So I went straight to a, a workout class, so I'm like sweaty. But it is 4.55. I am already worked out and home. This is a whole new life for me. Um, yeah, Mabel's upstairs. Steven is traveling for work, so you're not going to see him for a little bit, but that's okay. He's still around, living life. Um, but he is traveling for work. I feel like we've kind of switched places. You guys know I used to travel a lot for work, and now he's the one traveling. He has traveled almost every week. So, yeah, we are home, worked out. I am going to make some dinner. Today was a really, really good day. A really good day. Um, I love when I can make the 4 o'clock workout class so I can just, like, get it all done. But I know you guys, um, some of you don't follow on Instagram. I don't want to talk about it a whole lot because I will absolutely get emotional. Um, but uh, about two or three weeks after we left the rental house that we were in and moved to this one, because you guys know we were at the Airbnb um, when we first moved to Charlotte, Bubba's just wasn't doing well. He was 18. Um, and, um, we had to make a decision about him, but I don't want to talk about it a whole lot. Um, you can go to my Instagram and see a post that I wrote about it and shared, but, um, we just have Mabel. We think we'll be a one dog house for a while. Um, but she is adjusted. Steven and I have adjusted as well as can be expected, but like there isn't a day that we don't talk about or miss him, but he had a good life. He made it 18 years. So that is a blessing in itself. But I thought I'd show you how Miss Mabel's doing. Hi, Miss Mabel. He's a baby girl. Hi. I sneak up on you. I sneak up on you. Look how grown up she's looking. Show them your beautifulness. Show them your beautifulness. It's a beautifulness. It's a beautiful. She is quite an independent dog. I don't know if it's her or poodles in general. She definitely likes her space. I love you. So she's she's the main squeeze right now. We think we're going to keep it that way. She, We think she kind of likes being on her own. I love you. I love her so much. They had to see you, how you grown up and got so pretty. They had to see it. All right, you can go back to CPs. Like I said, I had a really good day. I'm going to get myself cleaned up and then uh, make dinner and answer some questions that I got from you guys over on Instagram. All right, friends, I am all cleaned up and I thought I'd answer some questions that you asked. One of the most burning questions is, are you coming back to YouTube? Clearly I'm here, so I am back. But uh, I left my previous job on March 8th and started filming movements, I think on March 9th. And I think, let me look, I can't remember how many movements videos I made. I made 20. I made 20 Movemas videos. So like during the whole move, I recorded for 20 days straight and edited and uploaded. If any of you have made big moves, especially ones that are such long distance, you know how much work goes into it. So I'm really proud of the fact that I did 20 consecutive days. That's five short of a Vlogmas. So really, I did like almost a mini Vlogmas in the midst of everything. And after we landed here, we were in an Airbnb for, I think, three weeks, and then we moved into our house. We had, like, a little bit of lapse in time. <clears throat> I think, first of all, it is not lost on me that I went from March 8th till the end of May without working. 
Uh, that is such a luxury. I know I do not take it for granted a single day. In all honesty, I needed that time. I don't think I realized how much I was impacted over the last two and a half years. Um, I think you guys were really attuned to like how I was feeling, but I was definitely dealing with burnout. Um, really, I was really struggling. Just to be bluntly honest, there's no nice way to put it. I was really struggling and it, it was nice to have some like air let out of the balloon, a little breathing room. And I just wanted to enjoy that like to the max. So I didn't pick up the camera probably until from the first week of April till, um, well now. And I just wanted to live life and be present. And for once I have the capacity to think of, things and process things and enjoy things that I just never was able to before. Uh, I've been talking to my friend who also made a big transition with his work and he said the same thing. He goes, I have so much mental space to like think about things. Um, and that's really nice. And I just wanted to enjoy that process. And yeah, so I'm back. Here we are. Question number two leading to YouTube. Are you doing Vlogmas? The answer is no, oh, no, I'm kidding. The answer is yes, I'm going to do it. I'm nervous to say it, um, but in all honesty, I've done Vlogmas with traveling and like zero time to film. I actually like have time. I have like three hours every morning and like I get home earlier than I've ever gotten home before. So I've, I'll probably be the most relaxed vlogmas. It's gonna go back to like old school vlogmas where I was so much more chill. Um, all right, let me see other questions. <clears throat> what is it about your new job that is so different from your old one in New York? Who uh, everything. Um, yeah, everything. It's, I feel like, I feel like so incredibly seen and valued and, um, as if, like, I have a lot more autonomy. I get to make a lot more decisions that um, I want to make. And the environment is just so, I don't know. It's just so different. I don't, I am never nervous about going into work. I love going in. I, like, literally can't wait. When Steven travels, it's really hard because I like to get there so early, but I can't with Mabel. Um, like, I cannot wait for, like, the weekend to be over to go to work. But that also is the luxury of it being very new, too. So, but I would just say the energy, I've become really good friends with my leaders, and I adore them. They become, like, best friends. Um, yeah, I'm just super, I'm super happy. What was the precipice, the inflection point that ushered in your new lifestyle and perspective? Um, I would say this really did all come to a head in January. I remember waking up on New Year's. I knew my word was reinvent. And Stephen and I had been toying with the idea. And we decided to take a leap. And Stephen landed a job so quickly uh, and things moved much faster than we ever anticipated. We thought we'd like move in the summer, but it's just not how God wanted it to work out. And literally God opened every door. And like, what I will say is I put blind trust of like, it is all going to work out. And it worked out better than I imagined our best case scenario. Uh, financially, um, time-wise, job-wise, career-wise, like what I imagined it was going to be was good. What God opened for us was spectacular. Uh, and that blind trust that it was all going to work out, I think Stephen really helped me with. Um, but uh, I would say New Year's Day, I woke up and we're like, we have to do this. I knew I wouldn't make it another year. Uh, feeling the way that I was feeling. I honestly know I wouldn't have made it another year. So I knew something had to change. That's why I leaned towards reInvent. In my head, I imagined that this was going to happen. However, uh, it worked out. Like, 
And what I would say is for the people who are scared to take the leap when something no longer aligns with your values and your core and like you just can't be a part of it anymore, when you take that leap of faith and trust that it will all work out, it does because you're doing what aligns with your spirit and your beliefs and every other person who I know has taken this leap and I've had two other friends do the same thing this year it has worked out better than they anticipated. Um, but the first jump is so scary because you don't think anything else will come along, and it did. How is your old house? Anything you miss from it? Steven and I just talked about this. Uh, so Steven and I definitely miss the yard. We miss, like, because we are in the city, in the city now. We definitely miss, like, the space for Mabel and the deer that we used to get and the fox and, like, we sat on over an acre of land. I think we missed that. As far as Rochester in general, I would say we don't miss anything. Um, and I also think it's hard to miss people now because like you FaceTime with them and like his parents were just here and they are ones who like to travel and we talk to them every weekend. And like, so like you don't, it's harder to miss people. Um, but I would say we don't miss really anything about the move. Uh, my friends that I are, am good friends with, I still talk to, I was just talking to a friend in New York, literally we we're just texting. Um, so I don't, I don't miss, I don't miss any, I don't miss anything. I would say we miss the space of the house. I do like the size of this house a little bit better. Um, this is definitely not where we will stay. Uh, we just need to find like the right perfect house. We just weren't given that luxury of time because we had to move quite quickly because our house sold so fast. How are you doing? That one's so simple. I am the healthiest and happiest I've ever been. I think all of you can see and many of you have commented on Instagram. I have never felt better um, or happier. I knew things had really changed when it was a couple of days ago. I might have posted this. Um, I can't remember the last time I've talked negatively to myself in my head. Whereas seven months ago, nine months ago, it was constant and every day. I couldn't think of a time where I didn't talk negatively to myself in my head. Um, but I just... I feel younger. I have never been happier. Stephen and I, I feel like Stephen and I, our house is constantly filled with laughter. We are laughing all the time. We are like, I feel really reconnected with him because I just think when you are in like a place of anxiousness and depression and like it definitely like drives a wedge in between. And I would say we laugh constantly. Um, I don't know. I've just, I've never, I cannot think of a time that I was this happy. And that's just like the truth. I cannot think of a time I've been this happy. What wasn't working for you in New York? Um, I think a lot of things weren't working for us anymore in New York. I feel like Steven and I had kind of hit a rut. I think that, um, relationships weren't what I thought they were. Uh, and that was made really evident to me. Uh, I feel like it wasn't the place we ever thought we would stay. I think when we left Charlotte, we weren't necessarily, we lived here previously for those who don't know, 13 years ago, we moved to New York. Um, I think we always knew we wouldn't want to stay in Rochester. We knew that would never be our permanent home. I think we overstayed our time there, if I'm being honest, uh, which I think is what led to the rut. I think you need to know when to leave the party, but like, I could not wait to drive out of that state. I couldn't wait. So like, I just think nothing was working anymore there, truly. Besides Steven's family being there, nothing was working. Um, oh, how's everyone else? Uh, how's everyone doing? Steven loves his job. I think he loves traveling. I personally am so thrilled to not be traveling. Uh, well, traveling for fun. We were just in the Amalfi Coast in August, but, uh, 
he loves traveling for work way more than I do, so I'm glad the shoe was on the other foot. But uh, yeah, everyone's doing really good. Mabel has adjusted, um, especially after we lost Bubba's. She had like a normal week, and then it came like two weeks later. She started to act a little different, um, but she's really like recovered well from that. But like everyone is great. My parents are so settled in. My mom and dad love it. Uh, we are all together almost every weekend. We just had like a long stretch of birthday celebrations where Steven's family was here and we celebrated his birthday and then my niece's birthday. Um, my nieces have come to work. Like it's all the things that I've ever wanted and I'm getting them all the time. I feel like the holidays are gonna be super special because like for Vlogmas, we could do like cookie baking at my mom's house, stuff with my sister, stuff with my whole family, things that you might not have ever really seen. Uh, so yeah, it feels, I don't know. It's just so good. Everyone is so good. My parents love their home. They love their neighbors. Uh, they're about 38 minutes away from us because they definitely didn't want to live in the city. And then my sister's about 35 minutes. She's closer to my parents um, than I am. She's like 20 minutes away from them. What are your go-to recipes these days? Um, so there's a couple things I've been doing. I've been making a lot of homemade refried beans and cheese burritos. If you're interested in that recipe, I will make them because I have all the stuff in the cabinet. Let me know. Um, they're so good. Like, they're so good. Uh, I've also made crispy tacos uh, that turned out really well. I made those the other day. Um, those aren't good. Well, I guess the, uh, the, the refried bean, the homemade refried bean, t and also refried beans are so easy to make and so much healthier when you make them on your own. Just do it. It's pinto beans, green pepper. Uh, what else do I add? I don't remember. I'll, we're going to do that recipe during Vlogtober. What else have I been making? I've made Steven a lot of homemade meatballs and spaghetti sauce. He loves that. So I've made a lot of that. Um, I feel like I've ventured out with a, uh, I've made a lot of soups and stews and chilies. Uh, I cook every night except Friday or Saturday, depending on what night date night is. Um, roast chicken. What else have we done? I don't know. I feel like, I feel like with him traveling, I've now had like a two week period where I've not had to cook as much, which I'm not mad at. Um, but yeah, we'll do some definitely, we'll definitely do some cooking. Favorite places to shop currently. I spend a lot of time at South Park Mall. It's very close to my home. It's not a good thing. Uh, they have a Golden Goose store, a Neiman, a Nordstrom, a Louis, a Burberry. They have all the things. Not good for me. Um, so it's been there. I also love Paper Skyscraper. It's like a, kind of like a gifty stationary home bookstore ish like everything that i love put in like one store so i've spent a lot of time at paper skyscraper um yeah i i would say that was probably like my favorite place to shop i find some really cute things there what's your favorite thing about your new job the people i have never there's no drama there's no like like they're just kind, like literally everyone is just like a kind, good person who like wants the best for everyone. Um, but by far my favorite thing has been the people. They're just, they're just like very, very good humans. There's no other way to say it. They're just very good humans. Um, have some of your New York friends not, um, uh, my New York friends, the ones that I'm friends with, I still talk to. Uh, my friend Patrick and I, we talk about music almost every Saturday morning. That's always been our tradition. Um, all, like, yeah, I mean, definitely friendships have shifted and changed, and I think that's part of life. Um, but, like, the people who are most important to me are still in my life fully. Love to see you thriving. What's been the hardest part? Um, I think the hardest part, and I think the one thing we don't talk about often, is like there is a grieving process that happens. It didn't make me unhappy. It's just, it was just like a loss. There was a loss of relationships. There was a loss of a career that like I served, used as my full identity. There was, um, there's just like a loss in everything. I, I, 
left pretty discouraged, but also so ready to go. Um, but I would say like the grieving process of the losses, but I will tell you for every loss, there were so much more to gain. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it's true. I don't even, there's nothing that would ever want me to take back what I lost for what I've gotten because it has been amazing. It has been amazing. And I've met people who have quickly become, I think like at this age, it is really hard to make really good friends. And I have already built a deep core group of friends. You also have to remember that I moved back to also a core group of friends that I have had and have been in touch with that when I got here, we could not wait to like be together. Um, so I think, I don't know what, I don't even know what the question was. <laughs> um, yeah, for every loss, like it was, I would take the losses all over again. Um, what surprised you the most? And it's been amazing, but was there anything unexpected? I would say the most unexpected thing is, and I think like Steve and I have stopped adding it up. We lost thousands of dollars and things. And it is our fault um, because one thing about a move this big, when things were in storage and then moved twice, like the way our move had to go because we didn't, we didn't move into our house right away when we came down here. All of our stuff was in storage for like a month in New York before it then was packed up and moved here. The day of the move, like we moved a very large house, as you all know. So we had hundreds of bins that were all marked, numbered, labeled. And your job is to go through and like check every bin. And we didn't. Uh, we kind of just trusted that it was there and we signed off on the paper. So once you sign off on those papers, that that it's a done deal. Like the contract is done. You're saying that you have your things. And now like, as I've navigated, I've lost thousands of dollars and stuff. Like we're talking smeg hot cocoa maker, my smeg toaster. Um, I just realized my William Sonoma roasting pan was gone. Like, I feel like it's like every week I'm like, where is that at? As you know, I lost all of my fall decorations. So people are like, you decorate straight for Halloween? Yeah, because I wasn't buying fall and Halloween this year. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that was like the most unexpected thing. But like, you know what? It's all replaceable and we will replace it. Still wouldn't change it for the world. I'm all about protecting your peace. But when are, you, when are the vlogs coming? That's so funny. Regrets are things that are unexpected. I, w I think my biggest regret is I wish I would have done this sooner. I think Steve and I both wish we would have left New York sooner. But, yeah. Hmm. All right, friends. I'm going to make some dinner. I think we have to catch up on some books. I have some books to share with you. We'll save that for tomorrow because uh, I've read some really good books lately. And I think Mabes and I are going to have a quiet night at home and probably watch the VP debate. Nervous about it? Yes. But um, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.